Well, it was Christmas Day, and I decided I would go ahead and take the Dominator out for a rip in the pond, because we had bad weather coming over the next few days. I had noticed over the last few times I've taken the Dominator out on the pond that I've actually had some trouble with um, the drive line. It, it basically wasn't running very free, so I brought it in, and I tried to do a little bit of adjustment on the rear strut, trying to see if I could get it to be freed up took it out for a second run and I noticed that whatever I did did not fix the problem the motor and the ESC itself continued to get hot so I decided to bring it inside and dismantle the driveline all right well I have got the entire assembly out of the dominator and the next thing I'll be doing is removing the rear bearing drive um, I wanted to show you this so this here is the flex cable that originally comes in the dominator and it already comes with the flats on the end you can tell the original flat was there and then I ground another one below it now the aftermarket um, shaft that they sell on Oxydean website is this shaft right here now one only noticeable thing was the nuts so the one on the left is bigger than the one on the right it takes the next size up nut well, I guess the the left one is uh, the one with the blade on it is an M5 and the one without is an M4 that is why I lost a prop on this because it spun the nylon lock off of it either that or it stripped the M4 aluminum uh, nut out that comes that you know oxidine sells now another thing is you can look at this cable and this cable is far thicker like the the actual wind of the cable is thicker than the actual wind of this so what I feel like is as time went on they upgraded to a heavier duty driveline now if we come over here to this this is the stuffing tube that came out of the dominator so we're gonna go ahead and take the original drive shaft here we're gonna slip it over it and look at this so look see how easy that is boom and it's it no resistance at all you can shake it off now does have a little up there at the motor uh, coupler but if we come over here to this and I was extremely surprised by this it's hard to film and do all this with one hand but I was I was kinda of blown away at this this is I don't know if you can tell there is no like no room in this watch this what can I get that liner to move for nothing I mean I am just just pushing on it that is that is tight like tight 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 so I feel like when I swapped out the shaft thinking I was doing a good thing because the cable was better I feel like it was actually a hindrance this is the upgraded version um, and I'll show you this has the bearing in it not the bushing now watch you can't you really gotta force it you really got to force it. So somewhere in there, you know, the bearing, in, internal diameter of the bearing is supposed to be 4.76 to where it rides on the 4.76 mil shaft. When I got this, this shaft was actually like 4.82, and I had to sand it down and get it to where it would ride and even push, even push into there. I mean, it was, I don't know. Don't want to don't talk bad on it. But yeah, it was a little out of spec but if we come over here to the original drive line it goes in butter smooth like butter smooth so I feel like the you know replacement part which is that one here is not as good as the original but I, I thought opposite because of how heavy duty the cable was but maybe it just didn't get milled down enough from the factory. Who knows? Who knows? All right. Well, with a little bit of success, I was able to get the rear stuffing tube out of the back. And really all I did, which is kind of crazy, 
I took the end of this right here and I set it up against the brass tube because it's damn near, I, I did one side, I think it was this side. I basically just tap, tap, tapped it with a hammer on this end because the stuffing tube stuck out about yay far and, I, and it was like a flat surface so I didn't have to worry about ruining it. And I just drove it right on through and it fell right on out. So here is the original stuffing tube, all of about four and a half, five inches long. It does not have any bend in it whatsoever. Roll it across the floor, perfectly straight. So maybe that's an issue, who knows. Okay, so here's the game plan. This is a seven millimeter by 0.25 millimeter thickness. So seven millimeter on the outside. It fits perfectly in the hole, nice and tight. And it also fits perfectly inside of this. Nice and tight, okay? Now this is originally for the upgraded drive shaft for the Spartan. This is gonna be my shim. And the reason why I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna cut off some little pieces that are maybe three quarters of an inch long. And then this here is a quarter inch. Let's see, quarter inch by 0 0.014. Okay, so this is why we're gonna use it because this fits over top of that beautifully. No gap, okay, very very subtle, very subtle. So we can use this as a shim to go through here and to go in here. And I've yet to cut it, I've yet to bend it, but my thought process was maybe I should solder it? I'm not sure yet. But I wanted to uh, get those numbers to where anybody who wanted to do this could could copy it if they, if they so choose. All right, so I used my little bow torch here and I heated up my stuffing tube, put it in the vise right here on a different spot, and basically I just used the length of it when I and I heated it up and I allowed the weight of that to bend it on over when I heated it up. Just took a very little bit of resistance to to put a nice subtle subtle bend in it. So what I'm going to do is I went ahead and put tape over the area that I'm going to cut. This is the original length. And I don't really know exactly where I need the bend to be. Maybe I need it directly in the center. Maybe I needed it towards the hull, towards the keel of the boat. Maybe I need it towards the uh, motor mount. So I'm going to cut it long to where I can stick a shorter piece in there and it'll give me a better rough, rough idea. Okay, so I have now been 12 hours and had to go to sleep. Come back, think about it. So I've got the stuffing tube in there, and I want to show you kind of the angle that it's coming out. So there it is right there. And it's pretty much coming out pretty darn level with the keel of the boat. So if anything, it has maybe a half a mil of upward angle towards this end of it. But if you were to cut it back here towards, you know, the uh, the back of the boat, I don't think it'll be such a such a you know drastic difference. So what I'm gonna do is pull this out and show you show you what I did. <clears throat> Alright, so I have finished cutting it and soldering it up, and this is my final result. You can kind of tell it's got a little bit of a, a curve right here. I'll let the curve kind of not be in the middle so much as towards the back of the hull of the boat. And this part here is all soldered on. I think it was 16 or 17 mil. So basically that's your motor mount that will go into there, fits nice and tight, no slop, and then this will angle like so. I did have a dot on it, but I just sanded it, so. Okay, so I have made some adjustments to the stuffing tube uh, from the first two configurations that I originally tried. Um, I've went ahead and shortened it up a little bit and I'm going to utilize this Teflon liner which is originally part of the Traxxas um, kit from RC Boat Bits. Now it measures that thickness right there um, as far as the thickness of it and the outside measures 6.36 millimeters which is roughly one quarter inch. Um, if we come over here and we measure the actual tube itself 
The actual tube itself measures 92.3 mil. And I had originally had a different piece on the end of this. And I don't know where it is right now. And when I put it in there, I realized I have a better idea. Just, all right, so what we're going to do, I originally cut this one 16 mil, and I had a 10 mil on the end. So I took the 10 mil off the length of this little piece here. So I took that off. We're going to slide this over here. We're going to solder it on. And we're going to solder it on 7 mil. That'll be maybe 7, maybe 8 mil. Then it'll give me a nice little socket here. Well, that socket there is going to accept the stuffing tube to where the stuffing tube will go into that right like so. Okay. And then we'll cut the, um, the liner about like right here. And the liner will actually accept this tube or it will accept this tube, depending on what stinger end you want to run. This is the bushing one. This is the bearing one. And then if you use the bearing one, the bearing one comes with this little adapter here. So you, so the end piece is 14.65 and the other end of it was 16. So basically we just cut this um, stuffing tube which is basically seven mil and we slipped it over the quarter inch stuffing tube like so and I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna solder this on and we're gonna make it permanent in the boat all right so I have gotten to the end now this is the liner that I'm using this is the liner that came with the Traxxas 3 16 kit from RC Boat Bits it works perfectly and it basically it's it's made for the seven mil stuffing tube um, for that 3 16 um, cable. Now I took a piece of that stuffing tube and I put it inside this bushing here that goes inside of the bearing support end um, that uh, Oxydene sells their bearing version, not the bushing version. Now the bushing um, stinger, this one here, you can just use that stuffing tube straight into the back of it and it fits, fits beautifully. Now, this, I put that shim in there. I think you can see that shim. Now watch, um, if anybody's wondering they wanna do this, this piece is 31 millimeters long. We're gonna take this. It's a tight fit. Okay, so now that's in there. We're gonna take this. That's in there. Then we come to the back. I still have yet to bolt this up, but you can see you got the uh, piece sticking out down there. That uh, that piece sticks out six millimeters. Oh, there you go. So now this is gonna slide right into there, just like so. And then make sure my yep my screw holes are lined up. The bolt holes that go through the side there, those are lined up. And yeah, so that's it. Nice and clean. It basically sits flush with the stinger mount and the stinger itself. Full adjustability, no binding, no nothing. Beautiful. I'm freaking loving it. Absolutely loving it. Okay, now the only thing to do is to bolt the whole rear assembly together and then we can work on mounting the motor. Now I had Allen wrenches holding in the screw holes to where I would make sure that that was lined up where it needed to be. Okay, so I'm gonna use the bearing uh, version of this and I wanted to show you where the stuffing tube basically came out, um, or the liner that I'm using. So that liner basically comes out right flush with the end of that. And if you see, it's all kind of flush. And I basically just put a couple dabs of super glue on it, which was the super glue gel. And I super glued that in to where, you know, if it's spun, it's going to spin as a whole. Um, but I honestly just don't think it's going to spin. It may. It may. But it'll be this outer piece running against this inner piece. And I don't really think it'll make a, a big difference. Um, now, what I planned on doing was when I go to put this in here, I'm going to put some RTV clear silicone and kind of smear it on there. 
and then slip that in there like so. And then uh, maybe that will be enough just to prevent it from rotating. But I think maybe if you put it in any angle or whatever. But I'm just trying something here. Not sure if it'll work, but it really, really looks good. And I've got a lot of uh, intricate, you know, redneck engineering going on here. But I'm sharing everything with you, all my measurements, all my sizes, all my dimensions, to where if it works good, you can do it yourself. All right, well, I've got the stinger all on. It is good to go. Next thing I gotta do is get that whole system mounted back together. And I wanted to show you how the base of it looks. And it looks absolutely perfect. So let's go ahead and zoom out here. I'm gonna show you. See, it's got that beautiful little bit of a gap there. It'll go down and it'll go up and it keeps the drive line inside of uh, the stuffing tube the entire time. What you see right there is a little bit of silicone. All right, well, it has been about an hour and I have got the new motor all installed and everything about this is completed. And the same for this, except I don't have this hooked up yet. But I wanted to share this with you the drive line is extremely smooth. Beforehand, you had to have a prop on this thing in order to turn it, and now it just spins nice and easy. And I'm actually rotating the entire motor right now. So, it's uh, very, and, I, and see, look, like I got grease on my fingers. Very easy, very easy. So this is gonna be considerable, considerable difference. And the fact that we're going from a 1650 kV motor to an 1800 kV motor that is also 8S com uh, compatible. I'm gonna run it on 6S to begin with um, for a while, monitor temps, and then eventually in the future we'll do a speed run on it. I just wanna make sure that cooling can can actually uh, keep that motor cool. But I'm gonna continue on with what I'm doing here and get it all buttoned up. I got a lot of stuff I gotta put back in it. I gotta put the receiver back in it and stuff like that. But um, I'm in the 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 forward moving direction to get it all put back together but um if y'all enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up there was a lot of work involved here i shared a lot of information so please give the video a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button i'll see y'all on the next one